Hey everyone, this is Josh with a fun security and cryptography tutorial for you today. In this video, we're going to be talking about password cracking techniques. Some different techniques that attackers use to find the raw password from a given password hash, their pros and cons, and why we need password cracking in the first place. So let's first discuss why we need password cracking. Well, in most cases, at least if a modern resource is good, they don't store raw passwords in a database. So if you're logging into a website or some other resource that requires authentication, that resource does not just store the raw password that you uh, input to compare to. Any good system stores what are called password hashes. Hashes are cryptographic one-way functions that take some input and give a output. That output is always going to be the same for any given input. But an important property of this function is that if you just have the hash, there's no way to tell from that hash what the input might be. It's completely one way and what that hash value will look like is unpredictable given any particular input. So when attackers steal password databases, unless the website or resource is really insecure, they're not getting a table of raw passwords that they can then use. They're getting a table of these password hashes. And they have to be able to figure out what the raw password is from the hash. But there's only one way to do this. Hash functions, at least crypto secure ones that are used um, for this purpose, are not uh, predictable or reversible in any way. And so the only way to figure out what input gives a given hash output is to guess a bunch of inputs until you find the matching hash. Remember that our hash function will give the same output for any given input, and so you'll know that you have the right guess when you find that input that gives the same hash that you're looking for. So attackers steal password databases and then use several different methods uh, that all boil down to guessing what the potential password might be. And when they get a hash that matches one in their leaked database, they know they have the correct password. Um, sometimes passwords are just run through the hash function by themselves. But other times, and this is an excellent security practice to do, the system adds what is called a salt to the password before running it through the function. So you have the user password and you have some random salt value that you store alongside the password hash. So in order, or in order to authenticate, you take the user password plus the stored hash, run it through the hash function, and look for a match in the password database. This will come into play later as we talk about some of these different cracking techniques. So let's dive into some of the different hash functions and some of the different uh, techniques that we use. So for example, there are general purpose fast cryptographic hash functions like SHA-256. These functions are commonly used for all sorts of cryptography purposes, um, but they're actually not the best for storing passphrases because SHA-256 is fast, and therefore it's faster for an attacker to run through lots of guesses to try to crack that password. So we have better hash functions that are designed specifically for things like key derivation and password hashing. One of the best modern algorithms is one called Argon2. And some of these password hashing functions actually have the salt functionality built right into them. So we know we have to guess to find our password match. What are some different ways that we can go about guessing lots of different passwords and trying to find matching hash outputs? The first technique is what we call brute forcing. This is the most naive technique for password cracking, but depending on the constraints of the system can also be very effective at finding potential matches. 
In a nutshell, brute forcing just means trying every possible combination within some reasonable limitation. Let's say, for example, that you know this system is a little bit old and out of date and it requires passwords to be between 8 and 10 characters. That's a feasible amount of potential combinations to try. So you can simply run through all possible 8 character passwords from A, 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 and onward to Z, 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 until you've tried every single combination and you find matches in your hash uh, database. Brute forcing uh, has some pros in that it can be really good at finding more random passwords within some reasonable limitation. So if you know a system has eight character passwords and a user does choose a really good random eight character string, brute forcing will eventually find that password because it's gonna try all possible eight character passwords. Now, a serious limitation of brute force is simply resource constraints. Brute forcing becomes unwieldy to impossible for longer passphrases. For example, trying all possible 16 character passphrases could take trillions of years, even with the world's best supercomputers. Now that obviously isn't feasible for an attacker. So we have to try some more sophisticated techniques for finding those better, longer passphrases. And one of the common techniques is what is called a dictionary attack. Human beings are really bad at randomness. We generally choose passphrases um, that involve English words, for example, if we're English speakers, or common phrases, things that are easy for us to remember, but we think are random enough um, to use as a passphrase. Dictionary attacks don't try every possible combination, like brute forcing. Instead, they work off of what are called word lists. So a dictionary attack word list could include things like common dictionary words, passphrases from previously leaked and cracked uh, password databases, um, all sorts of things and variations on those words. For example, um, substituting the uh, number three for the letter E. Dictionary attacks are really, really great um, because of their efficiency. You're generally going to have good luck cracking some passwords from a database leak because a lot of people do use common dictionary words, phrases from media, or reuse passwords across services that may have already been breached. It's much, much more efficient to run through a word list and try possible hashes than it is to try every single password combination. Now, a con of dictionary techniques is that you might miss passphrases that are more random. Um, for example, if a user is even generating dictionary word-based passphrases, but they are random combinations generated through something like Diceware, you might miss that because your word list isn't accounting for a lot of entropy. Your word list is accounting for the use of common words and phrases and those sorts of things. So, for example, if your user is smart and they're generating truly random 16 character passphrases, a dictionary attack isn't going to catch it. But dictionary attacks can still be really, really useful for attackers because they are going to get sort of the low hanging fruit in a password breach. Um, they're going to get the people that didn't choose strong passphrases. Now let's talk about a final technique in this um, password hash cracking scheme, and that is the rainbow table. This is somewhat of a combination of the first two, depending on how the table is generated. What a rainbow table is, is that it is a pre-computed database of possible password hashes. So instead of taking a password hash from your password database and running the dictionary attack um, using the word list live, you're going to pre-compute a giant database of possible, for example, SHA-256 hashes using your word list. Then when you get your breached database and you want to look up a password hash, you simply query that database using the password hash and see if there's any matches already stored in that table. Um, you could use 
a rainbow table for all possible combinations, like a brute force attack, if you know um, that you can work within the limitation. For example, that your password uh, using service only allows eight character passwords. In a lot of cases, a rainbow table is going to be pre-computed off of something like a dictionary attack word list, because it's going to make it quick and easy to catch uh, people that use those common words and phrases. A big pro of rainbow tables is that um, it's very, very quick to look up potential passwords once you have a hash and once you have that pre-computed table. You don't have to run a full attack through the word list for every hash you want to crack, like you might with a dictionary attack. You're already storing those password hashes. Now a big problem with rainbow tables is they don't work well with salts. A salt, like we talked about earlier, um, will completely change the hash output for that given password. So you can't easily um, compute a rainbow table if you have salts involved, because you'd have to recompute the table for every possible salt that's in that password database. That's why salts are an important tool in the security toolbox for developers, um, because it prevents things like rainbow table attacks. However, they can be great for running those um, sort of dictionary or brute force type attacks much more quickly if you don't have a salted scheme um, used to store your passwords. So that's a lot of information, and there is a lot that goes into password cracking and proper password storage uh, for developers. So I hope you found this tutorial interesting and informative. There's lots to password cracking, and I hope you take the time to explore these techniques. Maybe generate some password hashes and try running common password cracking tools. As well, if you're curious about these techniques and code, I have several different code projects on the Chain Tutorials GitHub that demonstrate some of these different concepts, from rainbow table generation, to dictionary attacks, to brute force, and more. And I'll probably continue to add projects uh, in this area of interest. So once again, I hope you found this tutorial on password cracking interesting and informative, and thanks for learning something new with me today.